Alrighty, well hi everybody, and once again it's cast time, and I definitely need to preface this, but uh, by, uh, by saying this is going to be a real shaky cast, um, as of about an hour, about an hour ago, the screen on my computer just started flickering, like flickering black every so often, um, it happened ever since I played, uh, played Pinball FX3, but I'll talk more on that later, so, and then there's the, uh, the ever-present chance of my uh, my uh, PC crashing whenever I hit Alt Tab, um, and there's gonna there's gonna be at least two instances where that's gonna be possible. Um, but first, let me uh, go ahead and uh, intro this music real quick. Um, it's gonna be the Angling Loser, Arena of Apprehension, and this is one of those. I actually listen to most of the album. It's pretty cool sounding stuff. Um, at first I thought it was just going to be some, uh, standard issue ambience, but the only reason why I'd want to play it is just because the, uh, the, the album cover, it's, you know, Fisherman, kind of thing you don't see every day on an ambience album. Usually it looks, usually the, uh, album covers on these things look trippy. You know, I look real, real artsy or artistic, for lack of a better word, but it's just, just some guy out there fishing, so... Definitely something you don't see every day. So let me go ahead and rewind this back. And then let's fire up. And let's hope the computer don't reboot. Okay. But uh, I still might have to check back here about the uh, about the one minute mark. It's been um YouTube's been freezing up whenever it gets to about the one minute mark. Oh, what the hell? I'm looking at something right now. Okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and get her started. Um, today's stream, um, it actually went pretty good. Overall. Overall. Just did my usual. Uh, played on chill mode. Just, you know, getting, uh, getting silver medals and stuff. Need to make a bit of an adjustment. So, but like I said, um, just been playing chill mode, aka easy mode. Um, for those that don't know, for making the recipes and serving the customers, you basically have infinite time. But on the downside, the best you can do on them is getting a silver medal. Um, but yeah, just did that. I actually tried going for a gold medal on some of the others. Um, I think I maybe got, out of uh, three or four attempts, I got maybe one gold medal. It's just, things weren't working right, um, getting too overwhelmed, uh, just flubbing the controller, you know, kind of like pinball, just, you know, making some, making some bad mistakes. You know, because to get a, again to get a gold medal on these requires a flawless execution. Like no mistakes are allowed when making these. I think I talked about this yesterday, um, possibly the day before as well. It's just it, like I said, your 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 gameplay has to be perfect. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea. Hold on. So yeah, it just in it, it was starting to get it was starting to get frustrating. I'm just you know I'm just sitting here trying to find different recipes, trying to find uh, d different stuff that that works and all that. And but yeah, for the most part though, it wasn't happening. I think um, there was there was one run where everything was set up the way I mean. Getting a gold medal was should have been practically automatic with the uh, with the menu setup I had. Uh, for those that don't, when I say menu, in this game, menu is the equivalent of a loadout, like in a in a first person shooter. Like, I've never played it before, but Halo, like you know, before you before you start your mission, you know, you choose what equipment you want to bring with you and stuff like that. 
Cooked Serve Delicious has that same thing too. It's called a menu. You you choose what uh, what food you want to put on that menu, or you know your recipes and all that. So yeah. Anyway, this this one particular this one particular one. I mean, everything just screamed gold medal on this one here, because all the um, all the items on it. So very conducive to you know a gold medal performance, but got in there. I thought I thought everything went flawless, but no, apparently I screwed up somewhere. I made one stinking little mistake somewhere. I didn't even I didn't even know what it was or anything. I just I didn't know about it until I completed the run and you've been awarded a silver medal. Like what? And look down there, yeah, one goof. So and I I kind of complained about this yesterday too. Personally, I think the um, the requirements of getting a gold medal are too strict. And then which, you know, which kind of here I gotta I gotta turn this down from my end. And I got a feeling that this is gonna be uh this is gonna be one of those albums where you know despite looking at my um. Uh, Looking at my mix, at my uh, sound mixer, about average, about, you know, normal listening range. I got a feeling it's going to be a lot louder than normal, so let me go ahead and, so let me go ahead and turn it down a little bit. So, but anyway, um, yeah, so it just, it was getting a little frustrating, um, Hang on, my, uh, my brain farted. So, basically, I'm having the same opinion about Cook, Serve, Delicious than I am about Pinball. I mean, Cook, Serve, Delicious is freaking awesome. Despite the fact that it's, you know, getting me pissed off and stuff. Just frustrating. So. You know, and, and yeah, I could, you know, I could just stay in chill mode, stay in easy mode, you know. You can, um, I believe you can complete story mode doing that. But, I mean, that's get, I mean, that's gotta get boring after a while. Plus, uh, my pride slash ego is gonna take a bit of a hit by doing this all the time as well. I mean, especially when I just breeze through one of them. You know, just totally uneventful. You know, they just, that happens too often. It just makes me want to try a, want to make an attempt at a gold medal. Um, but I did kind of receive a little bit of comfort when, um, like yesterday, I watched, uh, I watched a little bit of Felicia Day's, uh, she did a legendary, I'll just call her content creator, gamer goddess, uh, but yeah, she did a Cook, Serve, Delicious 3 stream, um, watching her do it, even, even she's struggling at it, you know, and she's, you know, I think she's got the gold medal, and I think she just started, she just started, like, in the tutorial area, and doing the first, uh, first few scenarios, but, I mean, even she's struggling. You know, she, like I said, she's getting gold medals, but, I mean, they ain't easy. Then, um, I watched another one. She's been a content creator for many years. Uh, her name's Murda. She's kind of a, kind of a goth girl. I think she has, a. Looks like she has a vampire. She has a. She has a fang-shaped dental implants. Like she's got. Looks like she's got vampire fangs. She. Yeah, she's got those. Um. But uh, yeah, it came up on my YouTube recommendations. I think yesterday or the day before. Um. I guess she plays it too. But um, she actually made it to the uh. To like the the world tournament. I don't know the name of it, but that's. But that's where I'm heading, like that's like uh, on story mode. Is that uh, the big um, uh, the big food truck tournament or something like that? I don't know the exact name of it, but yeah, she's there, and even she's uh, it's taking her several attempts. She was kind of doing, she's kind of, and she was kind of doing what I was doing. I mean, the moment you see like. One of the customers about to stomp off all mad, or the very moment you you uh 
you hit the wrong button or you put on the wrong ingredient, she just bails out of the run entirely, like immediately. She just stops and restarts. But like I said, he, I mean, the tournament has just started for her. And she was already, she had already bailed out of her second or third attempt, so. So yeah, I don't, I don't feel so bad. But, uh, like I said, though, I'm liking this game, and most certainly tomorrow I'll be definitely be streaming it. So, um, and then another thing too is, uh, I went ahead and fired up Pinball FX3, and it works, but my God, does it flicker! Bing, 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 bing. In fact. Playing that game seemed to have triggered something else inside my computer because from there on after, my whole computer's flickering now. Uh, putting the, you know, in the process of putting this cast together. Blink, 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 blink. You know, just sitting here, you know, moving images around. Blink, blink. So, this is really kind of, really kind of worrying me. Almost makes me want to just keep keep on alt tabbing until my computer reboots. It's like I said a few days ago. Whenever you know, whenever that occurs, um, that I can think of, it only happens once. Like my PC crashes, quote unquote, only once a day. It works fine after that. So, but yeah, I did a, um, I just did the matchup, the weekly league matchup. And I've I played enough to where I'm I'm out of the red, but I'm it's probably gonna take another session or two to get to where I'm gonna be stable for the rest of the week. And I forgot to mention just just one moment. And I did forget to mention too, um, I might do this tomorrow morning or at some point, whatever I can remember to or when I get a chance. Um, I still got to do, uh, I got to do my Quickie Gems of War session as well. Got to do a few uh, PvP matches just to stay above Tier 1. Because uh, if, uh, if I get defeated too many times, I'll get knocked back down to like Tier 2 or Tier 3, etc. So, so yeah, I still got to maintain my place. that on that oh, but another thing I earlier today I kind of went through my I went on my uh, YouTube movies just for the hell of it I totally forgot I had it the uh, the, 30, the 36th chamber of Shaolin I remember watching it one time a long time ago probably probably back uh, at least a year ago, back when I was still working full time, before I went, you know, before I switched to part time. So I mean, I thought it was just a, I thought I had just rented it, but no, I, I actually purchased the movie, and there was, there was actually a bunch of other movies that I purchased in the way back when. I think Princess Mononoke. It's like a, like a chibi, chibi anime movie, kind of liked it. Um, I think a respectful liar. Something like that. Um, I don't. I can't remember his name, but he's a he's a magician, escape artist, and he's also gay as well. Um, then he also uh, he used to go around and he used to go around and uh, debunk uh, myths. Like he would uh he, he would he would shut he would like he would shut down faith healers and stuff. He was a basically a professional skeptic, but yeah, I got, I got that, I got that movie in there. I thought I just rented it. No, I bought it. So, so I might be doing some binge watching. But to, to talk more about thirty, about the uh, thirty thirty sixth Chamber of Shaolin, um, liked it. Good movie. 
One thing I also uh, found pretty impressive about it is uh, those monks, they're some DIY motherfuckers. I could, I'm under the impression that that temple, it's like they built it all themselves. I, you know, you know, pounding the nails, you know, cutting the, you know, cutting the bricks, laying the mortar, you know, pop, digging the holes, popping the corn, building the wells, you know, like, like I say, it's like, I'm under the impression that the entire temple, that was all done by their, by their, by their own hands, like, they didn't just, they didn't go out and hire some housing contractor and, you know, show them the blueprints here, you know, yeah, the water go here, the bridge go here, and the, and the chopping block go here, you know, that kind of thing, you know, they, I mean, like I said, everything they did, they did themselves, so, which I actually found pretty impressive, because, you know, I know, you know, th you know, throughout the years, um, when I was, uh, you know, uh, back when I played Baldur's Gate on the, uh, you know, on computer, uh, the monk class on there, the monk class on, uh, I want to say, uh, I don't think it existed in the first and second edition, the monk class. I think it existed in, uh, in the third edition, and it exists in the fifth edition. Um, but yeah, when I was, uh, when I was creating my monk character on D&D Beyond, for those that don't know, it's, um, it's a Dungeons and Dragons website. You can, you know, you can create characters. I think you can create encounters and stuff, and, uh, it's all, it's, it's kind of like a Barnes and Noble as well. You can order D&D books on there as well. I gotta, I gotta take a drink here. Hold on. Throat's getting parched. So, but, uh, you know, hang on, I'm gathering my thoughts together. But, you know, in all these, uh, in all these, uh, iterations of monks, I don't, one thing I don't recall ever seeing in all these, all these forms of monks is the fact that, like I said, these guys are some DIY people, man, DIY guys, I mean... You know, they're doing it all themselves. I mean, if they had, I mean, if they ever had cars, man, they'd be, they'd be freaking auto mechanics. You know, engine blows, they'd be, you know, fixing the valves and all that other stuff. But like I said, the, the, these guys are some, at least from the uh, one time I saw this movie, these guys are some serious handymen. But, you know, throughout the, you know, throughout all the media that I've seen of them, um, when seeing these, uh, the monk character templates in Dungeons and Dragons, it's like, you know, the, the skills you can select for them is like, like acrobatics, athletics, that can be, uh, those could be part and parcel of their, uh, DIY lifestyle, but, you know, and they had, uh, other skills you could choose or like, uh, like history, uh, religion, you know, knowledge about them, but I didn't see anything in there about about carpentry, you know, I didn't see anything in there about stone masonry or, you know, gardening, you know, um, whatever category ditch digging would fall under, you know, metalworking, forgery, um, blacksmithing, you know, blacksmithing, you know, to make the, to make, you know, not, not just making weapons, but you know, like making the nails, um, making the nails they use to you know, to help you know, build their buildings, that kind of thing. Maybe uh, making making the horseshoes they're gonna put on their horses, you know, because I, um, I might be wrong, but yeah, maybe not. I don't, I don't recall seeing any monks riding horses in the uh, in the movie. So, but like I said, I just, um, when I went and created my character, and we, please don't tell me the music pros, okay, there we go. I was going to say, I don't want to have to do any more alt-tabbing than necessary. You know, 
us all ages. You know, they're just known as the guy, the you know, the, the character who can whoop your ass barehanded. You know, that kind of thing. Or the channelers of chi energy. You know, and, and, and that's it. But not the fact that, you know, these guys could probably help you start your car if you, you know, if it doesn't start. You know, or, you know, if you gotta, if you gotta leak, you know, if you gotta leak in your sink, these monks could probably go down there and fix it for you. You know, that kind of thing. You know, so, but like I said, I just did a kind of a quickie dicky job. Uh, creating my monk character and on this website so I didn't maybe if I ever get around to it and if I was to ever add a backstory I mean I, I basically just did this on a whim um, for those that don't know some of the back when I was playing off uh, idol champs be off and off little pop-ups will appear such and such persons having a D&D podcast click here to check it out so I don't know when I did, and you know, just after watching all these, um, all these podcasts and stuff like that, a lot of them are, um, they're mentioning, they keep mentioning D&D Beyond and what a great website it is. So I just went on there and I'm like, oh, hey, oh, this is pretty cool. And just went right to the uh, character creation. That was, but that was about as far as I got. Like I didn't create a backstory or, you know, anything like that. But it might be something I, that I look into in the future, though. But yeah, I'm uh, definitely giving that movie another watch. I'll just go ahead and leave the music running. But otherwise, uh, that's going to do it for me, everybody. I'll just call it good here. I believe I've said all the things that I wanted to say today. So, yeah, add a lure. And then, um, and then, um, tom and then today will be my last cast for the week. So, I was actually off tonight. I requested this night off and actually got it. So, so tomorrow and Friday will be my work days. So, so in other words, you won't be hearing from me until Sunday morning. So, but otherwise, hey, thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And um, once again, I'll see you all on Sunday morning. Bye now. <laughs>